what you have here, and I fucking love this example so much. I think it's so cool. because It's two guys, 100 years apart, with the same realization. I certainly know that um, assuming that you're on the right side of history, uh, especially if you're in a big group, is often a, a bit of a dangerous position to be in. So that Cassandra complex thing that I was talking about before, um, sometimes people might say, it's your duty, if you believe in a thing, to stand firm. Mm. Right, you should you should make right. your case known. You know, you're Ignaz Samelwise. You know about the germ theory of disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you're Rachel Carson. You know about the impact of DDT. You're Edward Snowden. You know about the the surveillance that's going on. So there's a really wonderful example: the comparison between Copernicus and Galileo. So Copernicus in the 1500s, he uh, begins to realize that the Earth might not be the center of the solar system, let alone the universe, and he has enough evidence to justify it, but he waits until his deathbed to actually sort of whisper out his great work, which is De Revolutionibus, this, this work that he made. And he does it on his deathbed, presumably to avoid the wrath of the church. Now, some sort of hardline freedom fighting, you should do it, don't listen to the man, don't back down, like just stand on your principles, people would say, well, that's a cowardly thing to do. You knew what the truth was and you didn't stand by it. A hundred years later, Galileo comes along. He sees the moons of Jupiter, sees the phases of Venus, sees the pockmarks on the uh, surface of the moon, and he realizes that the heliocentric model, this like Copernican revolution, is true, proclaims it from the rooftops. What happens to him? House arrest. He gets put under house arrest. He gets forced to recant under the threat of torture and spends the rest of his life under house arrest. So what you have here, and I fucking love this example so much. I think it's so cool because it's two guys, 100 years apart, with the same realization. And the justification for the first one not saying what he didn't say loudly is the treatment of the second. I think it's like just this perfect explanation mm. of irony. You know what I mean? Yep, like yep. it's so perfect. Yeah. And you go, well, the main issue that I have with like, basically being right and early often feels a lot like being wrong. Mm -hmm. 